Welcome everyone to the Kindle Report. Hi, I'm Bob Kindle. I share my 40 years of experience in the markets with you to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Don't forget to subscribe and like these videos. Yesterday's market action, we saw a reversal from the terrible close that we had on Tuesday. Markets traded up and printed near the highs that we printed on Tuesday and finished up above 2700 basis, the S&P 500. This was positive and the pattern that I've been discussing over the past several weeks continues to unfold. I hope you're not being fooled by this activity because in the backdrop, there's still a lot of things going on. The economy's still shut down. These companies aren't really selling anything. All we're seeing is the activity of machines and traders and cash flow piling back into market. This money is going to come out as fast as it went in. The downside volatility still exists, and there's a lot of things that we don't know. In my opinion, this is day eight of the crisis. Since April 1st, we are just now have seen the disruption of this economy. I'm going to keep talking about something, even if you're tired of it. If you are, that means I've finally made my point. Is the commercial mortgage market is completely locked up. Jumbo loans are not being made. Wells Fargo announced the other day other lenders are not doing jumbo loans in the residential area, but the commercial loans are locked up. Freddie and Fannie continues to be completely frozen. A company named Pinnacle, which is one of the large servicers in the multifamily area, announced today they have 35% of their portfolio is asking for forbearance. That's a lot of mortgages. If you look at this and carry it one step further, what about all the states that aren't collecting tax money, all of the bonds and the companies, even though these companies have rallied their stocks, have rallied back substantially? Congratulations if you caught some of that rally. But that's not what it's about. Ultimately, there's going to have to be earnings. To a point, companies may get a pass on this period because they couldn't make money. But in the end, you got to make money. If we go back to reality, earnings matter, income matters, and ultimately, this will have to be reckoned with. Don't think for a second that there's not a lot of downside in this market yet. I've been talking about a pattern. I'll go through this in detail again. And we're really in this large consolidation. But make no mistake that there's plenty of volatility. And when this market turns, it's going to turn on a dime just like it started. Folks, whether it's a news story or something else or just it gets overbought, it's getting pretty close to that point now. There's possibly one more day in the pattern. I'll break that down in the technical section here in a few minutes. But from a fundamental standpoint, there's still a lot to deal with. I talked to you last night about the black hole syndrome, where when you shut down the income, you can fill that income. But every day going forward, that income's being lost again. Companies are machines. They have to run. They have to produce. They have to do what they do, whether it's a service organization or whether it's manufacturing. When you stop the cash flow, you can't keep filling by adding cash because the cash just burns out again. There's no way this is going to work out for the long run. So just know that the fundamentals are actually getting worse in spite of the rally. I discussed last night how the stock market doesn't have the same levels of risk. I'll continue to suggest if you own some of the MBS funds and other types of bond or mortgage oriented investments, and they're trading at all time highs are around there. Take profits, set back and continue to be in cash. Some of you maybe are starting to get this feeling of FOMO. The market's going to run away. Don't think that's going to happen. The technical patterns I'll go through here in a bit. And I've set you up going back a week ago talking about what the expectations are. And we're still within those expectations. Expect lots of volatility going forward. We're not out of the woods yet. The economy still not running and fundamentals are actually getting worse, not better. Nothing has been fixed. The equity markets, especially in 2020, that are driven by machines and algorithms, most of you need to understand that the type of action you're seeing in the markets, these are not investors. When you hear every talking head come on CNBC and all these shows, mutual fund guys and every 
standard advisor talking about long-term investing, that's not what you're seeing, okay? There's no long-term investing. We traded about just under 6 billion shares today. None of those shares are long-term. This market turns over a massive amount of stock every day, and the turnover is going to continue, which means volatility is going to continue. So don't get too excited and too confident of what you're seeing. Let's take a look at the technicals and see how the last two days of the week are likely to unfold. Before we dig into the technicals, I just want to go to the WaveTech multivariant global equity strategy. It has actually turned positive on the year. It's up 1.79 after getting a buy signal last week. One of the things that I discussed the other day was that the small cap index had not moved in tandem with the other indices. That has now occurred. It's starting to see some catch up on the small cap. But this strategy continues to look real good. This is a six-month look back. This is what it looks like year-to-date. The 60-40 is the blue line. That's down a little less than 10%. The S&P is down about 15 And this strategy is up just short of 2% right now. And this is the advantage of having an adaptive strategy versus the buy and hold or the 60-40. If you go back and I looked at the long-term chart, this thing just blows everything out of the water on a long-term basis because it's actually adjusting risk. It's not attempting to mitigate risk through diversification. It's using a algorithm that is basically a binary. It's on or off on five symbols. Most of the symbols are correlated at a reasonably high level, most of them at 0.9 two of them are closer to about point. We'll start with the futures chart tonight. The futures have had a pretty narrow range or slightly positive right now. You can see the surge that we had on Wednesday and also notice that the 40 period moving average is coming into play. It's still down 0.56 on PPM3. That says there's only a 40% probability for it to be penetrated, and there's only a 30% probability for the futures to close above that line, which is 2791. We're trading right now at 2737.50. Looking at the cash, it's got a slightly different look, but you can start to see that the PPMs are starting to roll over. PPM2 is minus 0.25 which suggests that there's, it's almost acting as a magnet for the market to decline back to around the 25-25 level. On the upside, however, today we'll have some substantial resistance at 27.73, and the top end is 28.26. And this goes into the levels that I've been talking about for the past several sessions. Yesterday's broadcast, I discussed the targets, which was 28.93 would be the minimum target. And that's, you can see the extreme for today is 28.49. So we could extend above that just slightly, but we are very close to completing this pattern. I talked about having a 5.35. It's exactly what's unfolding here. High probability for a top to come in today Worst case on Friday morning, and we'll probably see a retracement on Friday. But this pattern is just about complete. There's a lot of probabilities to say that's going to turn down. I was just showing you on the futures that that is suggesting that we're going to see some downside. The PPM's already starting to fail on the futures. And when we come in tomorrow, that's likely how things are going to look. There's still a 60% probability to hit 28.26. And the upside is 28.95. There's still a 60% probability to reach those levels. Just a quick look at the treasuries. They seem to be locked between two moving averages right now, between 0.69 and 0.76. We went out yesterday at 0.764. A break over 0.81 will start an acceleration and start us to move back toward the 0.95 to 1% level pattern 
is suggesting even much higher yield as we look forward. As I talk about the debt in detail in the opening comments, this is the place to watch for any kind of real disruption to start to happen if the treasury market starts to fail and we see a lot of selling coming into treasuries. The gold market is setting up a potentially bullish pattern that is likely to go back to 1713 to 1742. The critical level is 1651. We're currently trading down just slightly at 1683. We could see a few more days of consolidation. The one thing that I am noticing is that the PPMs are starting to get in what I call an unorthodox pattern. There's mixed, some negative, some positive, and this is usually means that there's more of a correction to come. But a close over 1713, we're going to rechallenge that 1740, 1750 level. The final market to cover tonight will be the crude oil market. This is the May crude. It's currently trading at 25.89. It's up 3.15 percent. Continue to see this market stay positive. I mentioned this probably a week ago, but I think as crude oil goes, this will propel the equity markets forward as well. As long as we keep a positive tone here, we're likely to see equities move higher. If this pattern breaks down below the 2360 level, then that's going to spell trouble. We'll probably fall into the pattern that I was discussing in the S&P. This will complete the broadcast. Thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow night.